does Deadpool and Wolverine have too much fan service? Question mark. I told you not to do the question mark. It's a meta joke like Deadpool does. Well, it's not. I don't know if it's meta or if it's just bad grammar. Anyway, enough of that because we have just seen Deadpool and Wolverine. We've literally just seen it. And before you watch a second more of this, big spoiler warning flashing across the screen right now. We're going. We're, we're doing it all to answer the question: Was it too much fan service? Because I feel like I feel like this movie is going to be loved by most people, I think. I think it is going to be the biggest film of 2024. Mm. It's reinvigorating the MCU until the inevitable next thing where it's all over and, you know, the cycle continues. But I did think that watching it, I thought, are these too many references that most people won't get? Well, I think, firstly, they're set amongst some fantastic action scenes. And some And some really amazing set pieces. I think if you're paying, you know, to go and see this film in the cinema, the set piece in the car the fight between Deadpool and Wolverine, and then the set piece where the camera's moving on a dolly, mm. and you're going down that road in New York watching Deadpool and Wolverine mince through all of those Deadpools. That New York street that definitely looks like a real street and not a soundstage. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but no, those set pieces, and then the set piece that you missed because you were busy, busy taking a piss. Yeah, and so one thing, <laughs> the cinema, our local cinema, you you refurbished the entire men's toilet on the weekend of the biggest film of the year. Brian, Shame on you. We don't have enough time for you to get into <laughs> that deep cut, buddy. Like, no, this is what the video is really about. It's no, a <laughs> because the seats were great. Okay. So I think those set pieces are enough to make it a really serviceable action film. Yeah. Without understanding the references. But the references were heavy and they were deep cuts. Exactly. And we expected references from Deadpool naturally. Like top half is very heavy on the fox being dead all hail Disney and everything like that. There's some fantastic moments. Exactly. Which I won't spoil even if you're in the spoiler one, just in case. Yeah. But you know, if you've seen it, you know exactly what we're talking about. What I'm saying is, and there was always going to be references to like Captain America and yeah. Iron Man and Thor, blah, 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 and all those. But when it got to the deep cuts, that's when I was like, are people going to get why these are significant? I think the moment where we see Chris Evans. That was a great joke. And he's not playing Cap. Yeah. Is fantastic. And I love the little references to the actors. So um, Deadpool will often refer to Wolverine as Hugh. Um, there's a moment where he's making a joke about somebody wanting to f him and he references his own wife's name, which I think is really, they just generally really funny. In terms of the actual fan service, it's thick on the ground, but it's all sort of given to you in such a way as that you could enjoy the film without it, I think. Yeah, the film presents in a way was like, here's a significant person, but then you're not, you don't have to know who they are to understand why they're significant. And you know, when we see Lady Deadpool or Dogpool or mm. Headpool, all of these sort of ancillary characters from the Deadpool universe that are deep cuts since essentially. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff, I think most people won't, if you don't know, you won't really care about because you just mm. like the other version of Deadpool, a dog who's Deadpool, yeah. a woman who's Deadpool. Like that's, that's fun. When it gets to the level of Headpool, I think people are going to, like, I know who he is because I've read the comic. Like, I know, and I'm, that's not a brag. I'm not being like, oh, I've read the comics. I'm <laughs> a real But you do fan. have a comic book podcast. It yeah. would make sense that you'd read it. And I and because I've read the comics, I am a real fan. Yeah. But <laughs> point being is people are going to look at that. Surely people are going to look at that and go, why is he just a head? Why is he a zombie head? Where's his body? Why is he flying around? Like, yes. is that, and he's not in it enough where you have to know who that is, but is it going to add questions where people are going to go are the people going to be wondering that when they should be enjoying the film yeah i think the thing that was most heavy for me wasn't necessarily the deadpool law because to be honest with you it was very light on that the stuff that was the thickest to chew through was the fox law yes deep and fox so law. one of the characters we see is channing tate and playing gambit Mm, long awaited, long overdue. And so, unless you were a real comic book nerd, you wouldn't know that he had been trying to get a Gambit project off the ground for about a decade, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been so long. And I feel like the thing that was really stopping it from going ahead, I think Fox Studios were like, we'll do it, but you can't wear the weird sock thing that he had in the cartoon. And he wore the weird <laughs> sock thing. <laughs> And I think Johnny Taylor was like, oh, mon chéri, no, I, it cannot. It's like, stop doing the accent. We're in a meeting. But yeah, I think when you see that, people are going to be like, ooh, Channing Tatum cameo. Is Maybe it's just an added bonus at that point. Maybe if you know all that backstory, you go like, oh, it's cool because he's in there that way. And everyone else is just like, cool, Channing Tatum's here. That's fun. Mm. Um, we had a weird one with uh, Henry Cavill. 
uh, yeah. as a version of Wolverine. Cavalrine. That <laughs> Cavalrine, are you, have you... Have you coined that? Have you have you patterned that? Because that's a good one. No, Ryan Reynolds did it in the film. Oh, right. <laughs> okay, yeah. So with that one, I don't think there's any reason for that. I think that was just a fun cameo, wasn't I it? I think there's been people asking for it. I think people have been saying online that he'd be a great MCU Wolverine. Yeah, I think he's I think he's very hesitant to get into another franchise. Oh, I mean Daniel Radcliffe is the obvious choice. And again, you know, there's these moments of fan service that are fun little tidbits for comic book fans. So short Wolverine was funny. Amazing. Short Wolverine, they did a great CGI job on it. The fact that he's the first we see of Hugh yeah. Jackman was a bold move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's for Hugh Jackman's first appearance in the film, isn't it? Yeah. And so little things like that. Smallverine? Smallverine. <laughs> Is that what we're going with? <laughs> yeah, we're going with Smallverine. Okay. So they're funny enough in and of themselves that they stand up. Yes. But then as a comic book fan, you go, huh, that's actually accurate. Wolverine's like 5'4". <laughs> but again, in what something like that, does a casual fan go... Oh, it's funny because he's short. And then, like, does the the friend have to be like, no, no, because that's in the comics. That's actually how he's like. Yeah. And I think they do a good job of having Deadpool, like our Deadpool, expositionally explain away some of these things. Mm. And so there, there, there are these little explanations tacked onto it. But I think uh, most of the references held enough weight alone and were funny enough jokes in and of themselves that they held up and the other thing is that the big question here is how does the fan service balance up against what they were trying to do here which is take the two most popular fox characters and basically find a passage to get them into the mcu yeah exactly and i i think one of the consensus opinions that will come about i'd be shocked if i'm the only one who has this i think they sacrificed the plot a lot to make this all work yes. to make this all feasible but then, and I'm not saying that necessarily as a criticism, it's just kind of matter of fact. And also, if you're going to a Deadpool film for the plot, like that's your main thing, that, that is like going to McDonald's for a salad. I absolutely agree with you. The plot was secondary, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was self-referential in a way that I found really entertaining. I felt that there was enough plot there to hold the references together. And realistically, it's achieved exactly what it needed to achieve which is that it has wrapped up the Fox universe in a relatively elegant way. Bit shenanigan -y, but it's wrapped it up in a relatively elegant way and given us a means by which we can have definitely Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool and some iteration of Wolverine in yeah. the MC in the MC coming MCU films. Yeah, so to summarise, I think plot suffers, but ultimately the two main things that this film offers are the two things you should be going for, which is huge overdone fan service mm. and Ryan Reynolds humor but also fantastic set pieces i think at its core the superhero genre is something akin to like maybe in the middle of sci-fi action and fantasy and this delivers on the action so beautifully mm. that it's worth going just for that but more importantly what does everyone else think specifically you you watching this right now comment this, we're, we're fourth wall breaking like yeah. Deadpool. but yeah let us know do you agree fan service like too much not enough good bad whatever you think and if you want a more in-depth review check out the last deadpool episode of our merc with a mouth month where you will find our full review of the film exactly and otherwise like share subscribe and all that noise and thank you goodbye bye